on this episode of Ghost Hunters International. The team crosses the equator to investigate New Zealand's Larnack Castle. It was built by William Larnack. Unfortunately, William Larnack took his own life. Did you hear that? Who's shouting? What will happen when the team's newest member has a vision from the other world? That completely lit up. Seriously, did you see that? As the search intensifies, the team employs new tactics to contact the restless spirits. Now it would be a good opportunity to utilize the Singapore theory. So many things just got really, really dark. That Ian Lobster is going crazy. Oh, fuck. oh my god. This is the nicest place we've been yet. As lead investigator, I follow the same protocols set out by Jason and Grant. Our goal is to disprove a haunting through scientific inquiry, debunking, exploring all the alternatives before we can say anything is paranormal in origin. Hey guys, I mean, isn't this the farthest we've traveled yet? Yeah, other side of the world. Andy Andrews is a seasoned TAPS investigator. His skills at debunking are top notch. Donna is a great case manager, and I know that she's gonna find us the cases that we'll all be interested in doing. Brian spent a long time with TAPS, and he is an incredible tech manager because he knows this equipment inside and out. The great thing about Barry is he is really based in the scientific world. And that's the kind of thing we need to move forward in the paranormal field. And I'm especially thrilled that we've got Dustin with us. Dustin, welcome back, my friend. Thanks, brother. It's been a while since I've seen you, Dustin. It was, what, Ireland? What was the last time that I've seen you? One of the best cases I've done, man. It was a pleasure. Last time I was overseas was with TAPS, and I had a great time. So now to be part of GHI and be in New Zealand is just unbelievable. Hey, guys. Donna's gonna fill us in on the case for tonight. As you all know, we're going to the Larnack Castle. Larnack is New Zealand's only castle. This is a big place, guys. It's 43 rooms all together, plus a ballroom. What are we looking for for paranormal activity here? Was there a ghost running around? What we got? One of the biggest ones is an apparition has been seen in the ballroom, the feeling of dread or feeling of being watched in other rooms. And uh, interestingly enough, the movement of objects. Well, that sounds great. Looks like we had a lot of stories to take care of. All right, guys, we're just about there, so let's get in there and make it a good one. Sounds good, man. Let's do this up like we always do. Oh, my God, guys. Oh, my wow. God. Look at this. This should be fun, huh? I feel like I'm in a fairy tale. Hello. Hi. Rob. Hi, I'm Deborah. Hi, I'm Andy. Hi, Andy. How are Hello, you? Brian. Hi, Brian. Welcome to Lanark Castle. I'd love it if the investigators could find evidence of something paranormal. With all the stories I've heard over the years, I'd hate to think it was just everyone's imagination, but I'm still a little bit skeptical myself. Could you tell us about the history of the castle? Yeah, sure. Built by an Australian in the 1870s, William Larnock. A lot of people thought he was a bit crazy, actually. Um, most people were, were building very basic houses in Dunedin, and he had this dream to build this fantastic house up here in the hill. Unfortunately, the dream didn't quite come true. Uh, there was a lot of tragedy. Mm. He lost um, his first two wives. And he married a third time, and this time he married a woman half his age. And she went on and had a love affair with his son. She got a bit awkward, and William Lana shot himself in Parliament in Wellington. 
Have you ever had anything paranormal happen to you here? Yes, I have actually, uh, about six years ago. I was halfway down the front door steps that you've just come up and I got a bit of a shove in the back and there was no one behind me. I ended up in the gravel at the bottom of the steps with the bleeding face, bleeding knees. So before that experience, did you believe in the paranormal? No, I would say not. And now? I reserve judgment. But at the same time, I like an explanation. So would you mind giving us a tour? Yeah, I'd love to give you a tour. OK, after you. OK, we'll come through here. This is the first bedroom floor. This is probably the area that we've had the most well, interesting and strange things happening. Recently, one of my co-workers, he's the night manager here, he was locking up this area about 11.30 at night and he had a similar experience to the one I'd had, had that push in the back. Now, generally, the unspoken rule is when you're a night audit, you turn out the lights. I did the very top floor and then I got down to the second level. Things started to feel a bit weird and I was about to turn left to go down the hanging staircase. I felt a warm, sharp nudge to the back. I turned around and the second last door that I closed was opening. This is actually William Larnick's library. Sometimes we set this room up at night for private dinners. One of the dinner hosts that looks after the people in here, she'll walk in here and there'll be this extremely strong smell of cigar smoke and a very, very strong smell of port. I was in the foyer with another colleague. We approached the entranceway to the library and the other lady stopped in mid-sentence and asked if I actually could smell this odour of a musky man holding a glass of port and a cigar. So where are we going next? We'll go okay. down to the ballroom. So gentlemen, this is the ballroom. Lots of reports of sightings. Most commonly, this Victorian gentleman dressed in the black Victorian coat. If you look way down there, you'll see above the fireplace is actually a photo of William Lana. Many years ago, I was walking up from the ballroom to um, back in towards the castle. The door at the end of this hallway has got two glass panels. Standing on the other side of the panel was this guy. He had a beard and he had like a dinner jacket on. And as I moved forward, it just disappeared. Well, Deborah, this is a beautiful location, and thank you very much for the tour. So at this point, what we want to do is get all our equipment out, get our cameras set up, and see if we can find some answers for you. Sure, I hope you do find something. Until maybe six years ago, I would say I was not a believer. I don't think I'm quite as cut and dry these days. There's been too many things happen. But I'm a practical person, so I, I would like some proof. I'd love to see some hard evidence. It would probably push me over to the believer side more than what I am now. You know, we just finished up the tour, and I think this could be an incredible investigation. We've got a variety of experiences with people seeing figures, people smelling cigar smoke. Deborah, our client, got pushed down these stone stairs. So this is one of those things where, obviously, she has a real interest in getting to some answers about what's going on around here. So I'm excited to go in there and see how much we can document and how much we can find alternative explanations for. So we ready to go? What do we got? Cameron, we have one here uh, on the fireplace looking out toward the door. That's the other side of it. That's from the door to the fireplace. Oh, so we got two in there. Perfect. Three. Camera three is the hallway where one of those workers got pushed. All right. And as far as equipment, we got some new stuff going on tonight. Barry? I have been working on a new digital camera, specifically with uh, the idea of allowing the camera to photograph full spectrum. And so I'll be incorporating that camera tonight. Most cameras have filters that stop infrared light and ultraviolet light from getting in. This camera allows us to capture images within the visible light spectrum like any camera would as well as the ultraviolet range and the infrared range at the same time. All right, so we got a ton of activity, a ton of stuff going on around here. So it seems like we're real well organized. We're ready to go. So let's get the lights out and get going. All right, Sounds good. Let's get it
check out the landing. That's a hot spot as far as any kind of activity going on here. This is the location, you know, that we've got this showing. Mm -hmm. And this is also, to me, it's a central location. You've got the girl who would only go up to this doorway. All right, you got the creepy room there. Well, you've got the creepy room, but something is coming out of this room and, and going down this direction. There. So there's a nice hub. All right, so you want to get the, the yeah. tripod set up? Sure, I can do that. I'm going to start recording now. EVP session, Andy and Rob, main stairwell, second floor. EVP stands for Electronic Voice Phenomenon, and what that means is a noise or sound that we did not hear with our own ears at the time of the recording. Is the person who shoved one of the workers here present? Got a good shot of it. I'm good. Okay. If you feel the need to shove someone, I'm telling you right now, you can feel free to give me a shove, give me a push, give me a tap. Are you still... Did you hear that? Yeah. Who's shouting? I heard it too. When I heard this voice say hello, I ran downstairs immediately in the direction that I thought I heard it from. At first I thought it was Donna. I got down there. Donna wasn't there. When I checked the DVR, she was still all the way across the castle in the ballroom. There's no one down there. Does it sound like a man's voice or a woman's voice to you? Woman's. Same here. If you try to communicate with us, the one that talk to us, we can hear your voice. You know, you might as well come out. The screen is like almost having trouble focusing on you. I saw it doing that before when I was standing up here. There it goes again. It's almost like there's some kind of flash. Whoa, that was interesting. The thermal camera started changing colors behind me, and then the, the, the screen would go bright, it would go dark. We need to have the guys check this out during analysis. If, if the thermal camera's reading some kind of temperature change, get the digital thermometer out. Yeah, 66, yeah. 66 is what the FLIR camera's giving me, too. A cold spot is an activity that sometimes takes place in an investigation in which an area of air feels colder than the rest of the room around it. 65.8, 65.6, immediately, we, we'd already established a baseline of 66, it starts dropping. 65.7, 65.5, 65.4. If you're gathering all this energy for your big show, you just go ahead. Some people believe that the spirit is drawing the heat from the air around it in the room, and that that's what's leaving over this cold spot. 64.9. To be honest with you, I was kind of waiting for the big payoff. 64.5, still dropping. 64.4. You know what? We might have documented a cold spot actually in the process of happening. Staying static now, 64.4. I'm back to my pink screen. From 66 to 64.4. Ask us stand there. We've got voices, we've got sounds, we've got temperature changes, we've got things changing on the thermal camera. All of this going on at the same time. So right now, I gotta get some answers and we gotta figure out what's going on around here. This is 
is the ballroom. Supposedly people have seen a woman in a white dress and Victorian wardrobe. Right, and supposedly and dancing, right? Just tell me when you're ready to do some um, EVP work. Yeah, absolutely. Get started whenever you like. All right. Let me do the proper identification. I'm Donna. And this is Dustin. Can you please tell us your name? Dustin and I went in the ballroom tonight and we started to do some EVP work right away. And it seemed like right off the bat there was stuff that was going on. I keep thinking I see something move in that corner. See where that? Yeah, yeah. See where there's like a there's like a kitchen galley window? Yeah, it almost looks like someone's been moving back and forth. Yeah. Is that a window into another room or what? Yeah, it's the uh, like a back room or a kitchen room. What was that? What's the flash? Somebody here with us? Hello? That completely lit Seriously, up. Seriously, did you see that? Yeah. We had seen a couple of things going on. We seen a black shadow in one corner. Um, we had a flash of light in the other. All right, let's go closer. We're not trying to harm you. We just want to document your presence. See, it looks like you just popped up and went back down. Yeah. There's something going on over here. So many things just got really, really dark. Both Dustin and I approached the back of the room and initially felt really, really heavy. Almost like a, like there was a party we were interrupting and all of a sudden it felt like everybody was scattered. I could feel it getting colder. Yeah. There's no draft over here. No, nope. There's something very heavy over here in the right-hand corner. Yeah. We're not going to do anything to harm you. What the hell is that? I could feel it getting colder. There's no draft over here. Nope. nope. Something very heavy over here in the right-hand corner. Yeah. We're not going to do anything to harm you. What the hell is that? Did you just make those plates rattle? Dustin and I went in the ballroom. It seemed like right off the bat there was stuff that was going on. Donna, you get the cam up, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm right behind you. All right. I heard you make something rattle. It sounded like a bunch of plates, which would be right here. We started hearing things rattling down in the corner. It sounded like plates. That's what, exactly what it sounded right. like. I mean, I have to jump real hard yeah. to make that happen. There was a stack of plates there, and you know, I, I tried jumping near it, and I couldn't recreate the sound as loud as it was and clear as it was. Katie, we're just gonna leave a little camera set up here, okay, honey? We're gonna back away. So we get some cameras on the plates and we're gonna continue the investigation. We need to take care of the dishes there, all right? Can I back to command? Yeah, let's go back to command central, see what everybody else is doing. Yeah, it's a good way to get started. Let's go do some debunking. One of the main things that I had to debunk tonight was the smell of port wine and tobacco in the study. I guess we should start right with this. This looks like some kind of gaming table. And I couldn't help but to think of the scratch and sniff stickers. You'd have to use the friction on the sticker. It would release the smell, and then you'd get that scent. So you're thinking that the cigar smoke isn't really a phantom scent as much as it could be something that's just absorbed by what's Exactly. You think about it, we've got these big windows right there. Oh, yeah, so it's direct sunlight. Direct sunlight, if you get a... a that would heat that up pretty quick exactly. in the sun. Get the uh, extension cord, plug that in for you. So, 
What Dustin and I did was we took a hair dryer. I'm definitely getting a sweet smell. And started to heat up the surface of some of those objects in there. That could be confused with pork. Yeah. You know, okay, that, that kind of really rich. Like a, yeah, a sweet, oaky. Yeah. Yeah. You know? The first thing we noticed was that the table, when heated, had a very sweet, pungent smell. It's very, very similar to that of port wine or sweet liquor. We then moved on to the chairs by the fireplace. Yeah, you can smell that. There you go. So that heated up the back of the chair, and that gave an actual tobacco smell. Chalk another one up to the debunker. Nice job, man. Thank Good you job. very much. We were told about the activity that is happening within the ballroom. I thought now would be a good opportunity to, to utilize the Singapore theory. Ready to go? I'm ready. The Singapore theory is a method used in the paranormal community in which we try and recreate an environment that the spirit might be from. In this case, we're going to play music from the 1800s to see if this sparks paranormal activity. stuff down there down and moving. Were you able to hear the noise going on down there? I heard it all. Was it just me or did it turn very sickening? Yeah, to me it felt very lighthearted in the beginning and things were really free flowing and then it just got kind of like a carnival music. Yeah. Uh, not in a good way, like from yeah. a really bad haunted house. <laughs> now the music stopped. The noise down at that end has stopped. What if we used another one to see what would happen? We had activity after playing the 19th century classical music, and we decided to play big band music from the 1940s. According to the Singapore theory, this may give us different results. actually felt far, far better than the first one. And we got no response from down there. I didn't hear anything down there. So why are we getting almost a negative response from the early one? Why that one? we we'll run it again and see. Yeah, I think see we should give it a shot. it happening again. Yep. It seems like that's the stimulus. Yeah. We seem to be getting responses from the Singapore theory. Oh! What is that? That is some freaky looking spider. Oh, that bad piece. Oh my god. That's nasty. Me and Dustin went outside to try to debunk the whole Deborah being pushed off the front steps. Supposedly, she got thrown to about the sixth step, and she got pushed. She fell down these steps and busted up her face and her knees. So this step does have kind of like a lip to it. That's what I'm thinking, too, because she said the sixth step. Now, look, right here. Yeah, it's got a lip there, and it's got a lip here. Yeah. Now, if you, you're not paying attention, you're going to be like, whoa, ah. Yeah, because it kind of catches you. Yeah, it does. Yeah, because this one's smooth. <laughs> the one before it's smooth. When we went up to that sixth step, there's a lip to it. And if you're going down the stairs and you're not really realizing what you're doing, it's easy to slip on that step. I really don't think it was paranormal that with Deborah experience, I think she just took a digger. Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. We might have just debunked that, dude. 
It's it, guy. You gotta work quick when it's freezing out. Seriously, I'm just looking for the damn spiders, too, because I don't want to get eaten. Let's get this equipment set up in the ballroom. your flashlight over there and somebody was standing there. Somebody was standing right there. You're positive. I swear to you, I swear. As me and Barry were walking down to the ballroom, Barry's flashlight kind of raked over what the uh, coat room is. It looked like there was somebody standing there. It looked like somebody was actually standing next to the coat room with their back up against the wall. And I flashed my flashlight up and it was gone. I could have swore seen somebody there. We turned around, and Barry he said he saw somebody in this smaller corridor next to the, the bathrooms. I swear to God, there ain't nobody here. Nobody's gonna walk back here because you can't get out this way. There ain't nobody here, dude. Okay. Let's, let's check this out. One of the reports of the entity seen at the castle is a woman in the ballroom. I have utilized infrared cameras, full spectrum, including ultraviolet, and the thermal camera. So we're running three cameras in unison to see if we can capture that movement. This place just rattled. Yeah, I heard them. We uh, heard some plates rattling when we were setting up the equipment in the ballroom, and uh, I went over to the to where the mini DV camera is, looking at the plates. Whoa, that email was tech is going crazy. Uh, it was going to three, back down to zero, to two, back down to zero, back to three again. I picked it up. I uh, was bringing it out to the middle of the ballroom, and the middle of the ballroom was still spiking to three. This whole place is charged, man. I walked right up the center of this place, and it's got, it's, it was at three the whole time. Yeah. People have been having a lot of personal experiences there all night, uh, seeing things and hearing things. So uh, I'm going to investigate it further and see if uh, we can come up with some kind of theory to it. Andy, I'm going to show you this. Show you what's going on. See, look. See it? Yep. All the way through. I'm thinking, Andy, that there's some kind of conduit running underneath the floorboard. That's, that's what I'm wondering. Exactly what I'm wondering. Hold on, hold on. You hear that? There's movement down there. Kate? Mr. Lockner? I think I got your answer. Did you see some wire? Ghost. 
Uh, Barry had taken a very interesting photo. One of the first things that you need to do is try to recreate it so that you can use a investigator standing in as a figure to get a better idea of where that figure might have been standing. Barry and Brian kind of moved me into the area that they needed me to be. You're, you're in the right position. They took the photo, which then at that point gave us a working model of where this figure that we seem to have caught uh, was standing. Could it be a reflection? There's no way. That's, that's not glass. That's interesting. That's real interesting. All right, let's go down to Command Central. Yeah. Let's hope we get some answers. This light down here just came on. It's a basement light, just under the stairwell. Is there anybody down here? Careful, be. Cold down here. Anybody down here? Hello, anybody here? Sensor? It's right there. Sensor. All right, so that covers that one. What about this other one? We've got one there. Is there anything that could have triggered this one? Donna. Yo. Motion sensor. There's a, uh, there's a motion sensor at the top of this stairwell. So that was just a motion detector, right? Yeah, this light here, if you follow the wires, runs to a motion detector that's right here. All right, guys, let's uh, wrap it up. Right. Team was good. Dustin Hughes, a, a great addition, and he fit right in. So seeing him work and seeing how good he is, I'm, I'm thrilled that he's here. Learning at Castle uh, is a great location to be in. It's just great to be back and uh, to be part of something like this. Uh, we have a lot of stuff to go over. Good thing is we get to use some new equipment. Barry's new camera, we'll see how that turned out. And uh, Andy gets to use a hairdryer, which uh, non-conventional ghost hunting item. And contrary to popular belief, something Deep Barry does not use. Hi, guys. How did you get on? It was a good night. At this point, we need to get home, get some rest, and uh, go over all the evidence we've collected. And we'll see you in a couple days and let you know if we found anything. Well, I'll be very interested. OK. I I'd like to know now, but I can wait a couple of days. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye now. Today, we're going to be reviewing the evidence for Lawnar Castle. We had a lot of personal experiences last night. Full body apparitions, shadows, plates rattling, uh, rustling. So we have a, a lot to go on, and plus we have a lot of history about this place. Uh, people dying there. Warnock family lived there since like 1890. So hopefully by the end of the night we'll have a few pieces of uh, evidence to look at, and uh, hopefully we can bring some to the client. Hey guys, check this out. This is pretty weird. Don and I were doing some uh, EVP work. And the plate started rattling. It'll be coming up here, Barry. You hear it pretty clearly, eh? Yeah. I'll rewind it for you, Bri. That's definitely something. Yeah. You asked the question. Yeah. And then, well, two seconds later, you right, right, right. Right. Like, it was it was gearing up to do something. Yeah. So, that's pretty good. That's All right, good. Check it out. So, I think I'll move on to uh, the photographs. OK.
Okay, guys. What up, you? I want you to have a look at this. All right. These shots were taken, obviously, full spectrum. Yeah. And obviously, you see the ballroom here. Now, I click to the next one. There. New camera's paying off, brother. Nice work, Irish. So, how'd we do? Pretty damn good. That's what I like to hear. Nice. One of the things that I'm curious about is that thermal footage that you and I had taken up on the second floor. Who was able to take a look at that? I took a look at it, brother. Awesome. What I think happened is, even though you had the thermal on a tripod, yep. you weren't getting movement with the actual camera, but when Rob would move around, the temperature would actually change just because his body heat that he's given off and the wind that he creates as he moves, and that's what was causing the color changes. Awesome. What we're going to do is start off with the... Uh, the mini DV camera that Dustin was reviewing. The dishes that we heard rattle when we were in the ballroom, Donna, yeah. the uh, mini DV camera, although we didn't have the video of the plates rattling, we do have the audio, so I can let you guys yeah, take a listen absolutely. to that. It's pretty clear, oh huh? God, that is, that's cool. Yeah. I'll rewind it for you there, Rob. You hear that? Yeah. Definitely hit the plates, right? Absolutely. That area was searched high and low. What was there isn't going to be doing it on its own. I got one other quick thing for you. This is also in the ballroom. Don and I had left a camera on the dishes in case it happened again. I remember. And we do not have the dishes, but we do have what sounds like bottles rattling around. It is anomaly because right. it didn't happen right. in any of these other tapes. I mean, it's pretty clear. Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty good, huh? That is cool. And what I like about that is it's short. Right. It's a short segment, so if it was some kind of machinery going on causing a vibration, you'd get it going for a period of time. Plus, you get it going more than once. Exactly. That's interesting because it's almost like someone bumped the corner of something walking by. Right. And that was the only cool. time it happened on the whole time. And all these tapes and the whole time I was in the room, I never heard that sound. It's nice to hear that this got picked up on tape. This is exactly what it sounded like. And uh, I listened to other people exiting and entering the room, and the door doesn't make anything vibrate like that. Wow. So. Well, the thing I'm happy about with this footage is that knowing that when you guys were doing the investigation, you didn't say, oh, there's dishes rattling over there. We've got a ghost. You ran over there. You jumped up and down. You checked it out. And now that we have it as evidence, it, you know, now we can feel confident when we go to the client and say, we know that there was no other way that this could have happened. Guys, you remember that I was running a, a test in the ballroom that was covering both thermal, IR, visible, and UV. This is using the new camera? All at the same time. Yes. Now, what we did find is something has shown up. Um, and we have cross-referenced that with the DVR system to make sure that there was no one there. And have a look for yourselves there. Hey, Deborah, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Good to see you again. Well, we came in and you told us the experiences and what's happened. What we try and do is we look for alternative explanations. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you say that there's a knocking sound, well, we might look for a loose floorboard or something like that that could create that sound, something not paranormal. And the big thing that we needed to debunk was strong smell of either port wine mm -hmm. or cigars coming from the library. Right. So I, I did something a little odd, but it did have some good results. I actually took a hair dryer. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I went to some of the pieces of furniture and gently warmed them up. Mm -hmm. And what I found was as soon as the warmth started to occur, it started to release.
some smells. That makes sense to me because some of the people that have smelt that smell, they've been serving dinner guests in there at night, so there will have been a, an extra heating on in there. Ah, okay. Now, at that point, you know, we're, we're still going it with the idea of how can we figure out the things that are going on here in normal ways? One of the things that definitely interests us your push it's on the stairs. Our investigators inspected the stairs and found one step that has a lip on the end of it. We believe you felt as if you were pushed. You could have been wearing heels that day. There's too much that just goes into it. I could have just tripped. That's always a possibility. Right. We had some personal experiences that we'd like to share with you. Brian and Barry were coming down this passageway right outside the ballroom. Brian was looking at Barry's flashlight beam as he came to the entrance and saw a figure standing right outside the doorway. Okay. He raises his flashlight, stops dead and says, what was that? By the time he gets his flashlight there, this figure's gone. Mm -hmm. We use our senses, we go for the same smells, the same sights and all that, mm -hmm. but at the same time we bring in the equipment right. because we want to document something. Mm -hmm. We did capture something that, that we want to share with you. Okay. In this very ballroom, we had Dustin and Donna, they were... Oh my goodness, it's her fire alarm. We're going to have to leave. We've got to evacuate. Oh my goodness, it's her fire alarm. I'd like to say I'm surprised the fire alarm went off, but having been here many times when it's happened before and it's unexplained, maybe I shouldn't be surprised. So as we try and give you the evidence, the fire alarm goes off? Actually, this doesn't surprise me. There's been other incidences recently where this has happened. One was on the anniversary of William Larnick shooting himself to the day to the minute. And when the fire brigade came up here, there was no reason for the fire alarm to go off. In fact, it all went back to an alarm that actually had to have the glass broken and it wasn't broken. So you've had a bunch of coincidences. Here. Coincidences. Fire yeah, we have we have a lot of coincidences, don't we? Okay, guys. Oh, we're fine. How do we do? Yeah, good. You're all set to all set to go back in. Everything's nice and clear. Oh, okay. perfect. Thanks. Any idea what happened? Uh, no idea. Could be the ghost, though. There you go. There you go. Hey, well, thanks a lot. No, no problem at all. All right. Well, that was certainly interesting. It was indeed. <laughs> so here's what we've got. Two of our investigators had entered the ballroom, and what they kept hearing was the rattling of dishes at the other end, the far end of the ballroom. So when we went back and when you reviewed the tape, they actually caught the sound of that rattling dishes. We want to play that tape for you now. We're not going to do anything to harm you. What the hell was that? Did you just make those plates rattle? Can I be able to hear that again? Absolutely. Okay. So here's where it gets pretty interesting. So we take a camera and focus it solely on the plates. We make sure no one's around and try and now capture once again that sound of the plates rattling. Can do that again for you. Yeah, I heard rattling. I heard maybe even teaspoons or... Exactly. We hear plates rattling. Mm. So we go, we put a camera on the plates. Now something beyond there, the bottles or the spoons, yeah. starts rattling even further back. Yeah, somewhere else. But where this occurs, now there's no one in the room. Right. So what was rattling the plates and the bottles? We have no idea. One of our investigators, Barry, who you met briefly, mm -hmm. has been experimenting with a new camera that captures a full spectrum. It goes beyond visible light, or what we normally see, into IR and UV, ultraviolet. So it captures everything within that wide spectrum in the hopes that it's possible to capture spirit activity with that kind of photography. So first what we want to do is show you the footage that was captured with our DVR camera of him setting up and taking pictures of obviously the area we're in right now. So this is the edge of the stage, the corner of the stage. Yeah. I and my camera man are right here, right by the stage. 
Brian's in the back corner. Barry's taking the photo right there, and the hand comes down. At this point, we know where everyone is in this room. Mm -hmm. This is what the picture that Barry took looks like. There's Brian actually in that back corner. That's his backside. He's looking through. This is what's known as a light flare due to our IR lights. And if you look your, towards this way. Is that people sitting there? Where? What's that? I see someone looking at me directly, and I see the back of someone's head. And can you point out exactly where you see the... the I've, I've got someone looking at me here. Mm -hmm. Definitely a man's face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see the same thing. I see a face here that is looking out almost towards the camera. Mm. And that's not a face of anyone who was with us or anyone that we saw standing in this room. Mm. Now, here's a picture Barry took just before the one we just showed you. As you can see, there's no one in that area. I mean, when you see this, how does it make you feel? It's so real that it's just about unbelievable. Well, you were riding the fence before. I was riding the fence. Which side? Are you still sitting on the fence, or have you fallen one side or the other? I'm going to let myself go and actually feel that there's something happening here. I don't know what it is. It's there, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty amazing. When you take a picture and know that there's no one standing there and check all your camera equipment, and we've got the face of a man staring back at us, that's not a coincidence. Mm -hmm. After verifying that there was no one standing by that fireplace with other pictures, I feel comfortable saying that we believe that this castle is haunted. Mm -hmm. This is a kind of location that has had a lot of emotion, had a lot of tumultuous things happen here. But I will say this, everyone felt perfectly comfortable here. Nothing captured in the evidence appears menacing or no, angry. No, I'd agree with that. Well, Deborah. We had a wonderful time here. We had a really good investigation. We're pretty happy with the results, and we hope that you are as well. Mm, I am, and thank you for being so professional. Thank I you. really appreciated that. If there's anything we can do in the future to help you out or answer any questions, we'd be happy to. Thank you. We've enjoyed having you here. Deborah, thanks so much. Thank you. I'm a little bit shaken by the evidence, actually. I feel happy. I don't feel worried, but I just surprised and, yeah, a bit blown away by the evidence. I was weighing in on the side of a non-believer. <laughs> I don't think I could say that now. You know, I think that really went well. Deborah was on the fence, and, you know, I don't think that we come in and necessarily try and convince them one way or another. We just present the evidence and let them make up their mind. And that's exactly what happened. It took her a few moments to kind of digest it all and, and make an opinion on it, but right. she did. And let's face it, that was some incredible evidence as far as I'm concerned. Some of the best that we've gotten yet. All right, well, let's go find Donna and uh, see what she's got for us next. Sounds good to me.